بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا وقائدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وأنا علينا يا عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah Almighty and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. And I ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who had gathered us here tonight, to make us from amongst those who he gathers under his throne in a day when there's no shade except his shade, in the hereafter. Amin. Brothers and sisters, as we started to speak about the size of the Day of Judgment, and we began speaking about the minor signs of the Day of Judgment as the majority of the minor signs come before the major signs. And we mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His Rahmah upon us, Allah made indications and signs. Signs and indications before the Day of Judgment comes. The signs are divided to two, minor, major. And obviously the minor signs Majority of them come before the major signs. And the minor signs are not connected to one another. However, the major signs are connected to one another. Which means, the moment that one major sign appears, the rest will follow as the Prophet ﷺ said. And there are ten major signs. And the ten major signs, the last major sign is connected to the beginning of the Day of Judgment. However, the minor signs are not connected to one another. So a minor sign could appear now and another one could appear decades or centuries or years after. And when we say the minor signs of the Day of Judgment, not necessarily that the signs of the Day of Judgment are evil. Some of them are evil, some of them are good, and some of them are just natural. And I mentioned all that at the beginning of lecture last week. And I also spoke about some of the minor signs. And we began with the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam where he said alayhi salatu was salam Bu'ithtu ana wa sa'a kahatayn Me and the day of judgment was sent like this. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam grabbed the index finger and the middle finger and combined them like that. So that gap, the empty gap between the index finger and the middle finger is what's left from this world. That gap between the index finger and the middle finger is what's left of this world. And then we said, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi salatu wa sallam, mentions so many different ahadith regarding the Day of Judgment, the signs of the Day of Judgment. The Hudayf ibn Yaman, he says, that one day Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood on the member after Fajr to Maghrib. The only thing that took him down from the member is the Salah. And he mentioned all the different signs and all the different things that will take place to the Day of Judgment. And Hudayf ibn Iman, he says, and the most knowledgeable one amongst us is the one that remembered what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu mentioned. So the beginning of the signs of the Day of Judgment is the appearance of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Then the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says in the hadith, that we went through it last week, but we just read it quickly. He alayhi salatu was salam tells Auf ibn Malik, prepare six, prepare six things before the day of judgment. Prepare six things before the day of judgment. Number one, my death. So the death of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam is also one of the signs of the day of judgment. Number two, the conquest and the opening of Jerusalem. And we spoke about that during the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Then number three, 
a disease that will come upon people will make them fall like how a disease spread amongst a herd or sheep. I will speak about that, which was a plague of Amwaz during the time of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. Then he says, alayhi salatu wasalam, number four, wealth and money will be widespread amongst people that someone will take a dinar and still unhappy, even though there's a lot of money. And number five, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says a fitna, a fitna, a trial, a calamity, a corruption, affliction that will enter every single Arab house. And some scholars define the word Arab house, every single Muslim house. And that fitna could have been existing these days. Some of the scholars said the fitna is TV entering every single house. Maybe internet. Not that TV is haram to have. Or internet haram to have, but it depends what you use it for. And lastly, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, a truce, a truce, a treaty, peace treaty, between the Muslims and the nation of the yellow people. Who are the nation of the yellow people? During the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Arabs used to call the Romans the yellow people. So a truce between the Muslims and the Europeans, Romans are the Europeans. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, then they'll betray, they will betray that truth. They'll cut off and betray that truth. And then they'll fight against the Muslims, they will come with 80, they will come with 80 divisions. Each division, 12,000 soldiers. That's nearly a million soldiers. That sixth one, I'm going to leave at last. I'm not going to talk about it. To the last, because that's not something that hasn't happened yet. Now, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also speaks about one of the signs of the day of judgment is the widespread of fitan, widespread of corruption, widespread of afflictions, calamities, predicaments, trials, tribulations. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also says that a man will wake up, wake up early in the morning, a believer will sleep at the end of the day, disbeliever. The next day wakes up a disbeliever, at the end of the day he becomes a believer, jumping up and down. Subhanallah, wakes up early in the morning, prays Fajr, heart connected to Allah, Subhanallah. During the day he sees something, disbelieves in Allah. The next day, Allah changes his life again, wakes up in the morning, disbeliever, then by the end of the day comes back as a believer. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continues to say, he will sell his deen with the smallest price of this world. He'll sell his deen for a dollar. Someone sells his deen for a dollar. Someone is willing to give up his religion for the smallest price of this dunya. Willing to compromise the most important and faithful thing in his life for a dollar, for a dinar, for a dirham. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says. Then the Nabi alayhi wa sallam continues to say about fitan, fitan and afflictions. Trials and tribulations, corruption. It will be so hard to people, for people to live in that the one that's sitting, better than the one that's standing. The one that's walking, better than the one that's running. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, fitan, trials and corruptions and afflictions, as dark as the night. And early gets darker. You know when the night begins? It just gets dark, and then what? And then more dark. So dark, and darker, and darker. And this is the type of fitan that people will face. Will be very, very tough. Will be so tough, so hard, so difficult, so challenging, that people will come from a hard fitna into a harder fitna. From a tough fitna into a tougher fitna. And that's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, another hadith he says, that people will experience fitan. Someone will go through a fitna. And when they say the word fitna, the word fitna means a lot. It means a test, a trial, corruption, affliction. You know, something that seduces people, seduction. These are all fitan. Something that makes people fall and collapse. Fitna. Like how some people, for example, when they go down to the city and they see women not wearing the best of clothing to them, like, you know, some people, that's a fitna for them. 
Big fitna. Or they go down to the beach, they see scenes they can't handle. That's a fitna. And everyone's fitna is different to the other. In Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, will come to fitna. People experience fitna. That one fitna will come after the other. Some will say, this is the worst that I could ever experience. Then later on, another fitna will come. who will start to say the previous fitna was a lot, a lot easier. It was a lot easier. And then fitna just escalate and become even harder and harder. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, that Allah Azza wa Jal made the prosperity, the prosperity of my ummah and its flourishment at its beginning. And then later on, at the end of my ummah, at the end, last times of my ummah, my ummah shall face hardships and calamities. And the fitan will come. That someone will see a fitna, he'll say, this is, will destroy me. That's it. This will destroy me. Then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, whoever wants to be saved from the hellfire, then let him face Allah Azza wa Jal and let him die with la ilaha illallah, believe in Allah in the day of judgment. And let him do to others what he loves for himself to be brought to himself. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also says in some ahadith that the fitna will come from the east. He even pointed towards the east. And he says the horn of the shaitan shall come out of the, 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 from the east. From the eastern side of the world. Now what does that mean? We'll talk about it during the time of Dajjal because it could refer to the Dajjal. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions about the Dajjal, how the Dajjal is in the east. How the Dajjal is in the east. Okay. Also, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about a fitna, which is a trial, an affliction that the Ummah had faced. And this happened after the death of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. And what the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said happened. One of the signs of the Day of Judgment that the Prophet ﷺ spoke about and it happened after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, is he says, the Day of Judgment would not take place until two parties from my nation will fight one another, will fight one another severely. The Day of Judgment will not take place until two parties from my nation Two great parties from my nation will fight one another. They will fight one another severely, as he sallallahu says. So it's not just a normal fight, a severe fight. And both of them call to one call. Both of them are Muslims. And both of them say, La ilaha illallah. And both of them are fighting for the haqq. And this no doubt happened during the time of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu when Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu fought against Muawiyah two Muslim armies fought against one another in the battle of Al-Jamal, the Camel and Safin which is an area in Iraq 36, 36 Hijrah which is about 26 years after the death of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam two great Muslim armies fought one another one led by Ali ibn Abi Talib, a companion. The other one led by Muawiyah, a companion. Ali ibn Abi Talib is the son-in-law of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muawiyah is the brother-in-law of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is married to his sister. Two Muslim armies fought one another during the year of 36 Hijrah. Over 70,000 Muslims were killed. 70,000 Muslim was killed in that battle. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the day of judgment would not take place until two great parties from one nation will severely fight one another and their call is one. Does anyone doubt the call of Ali radiallahu ta'ala? No doubt. Does anyone doubt the call of Muawiyah? No doubt. But subhanAllah, misunderstanding misunderstanding made them fight one another 70,000 Muslims were killed 70,000 Muslim was killed in those battles 26 years after the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam 
And that's why in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam is talking about very important matters that will take place during his time alayhi salatu wasalam. And amongst those fitan did not start the fitan amongst the sahaba between Ali and Muawiyah and uh, between other companions because with Ali he had other companions standing with him and Muawiyah had other companions standing with him excluding the other Muslims from the Tabi'een and so on and so on. One day Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman he was that companion that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to trust with his secrets. Hudayfa is that companion that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam used to trust with his secrets. He will say and inform Hudayfa why he does not inform other companions including Abu Bakr and Umar. During the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu when he was a Khalifa, Umar was sitting in a gathering amongst the Muslims and Hudayfa ibn Yaman was there. So Umar asked Hudayfa in front of the gathering, in front of the rest of the Muslims and he said to him, O oh Hudayfa, do you know much about the fitan? Do you know much about those days where it's fitan, people are tested and trialed? So Hudayfa said, yes, the big fitna is the one when Allah tests someone with his family, with his wealth, with his children, with his businesses, with the people around him. So Umar ibn Khattab said, no, 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 I'm not talking about that type of fitna. I'm talking about the type of fitna that comes like a wave of an ocean that destroys everything in front of it. So Hudayfa says to Umar, then why are you concerned about that type of fitna? There's a long way between you and that fitna. And when you get to the end of that way, there's a massive door there. And that door is locked. And nothing can go beyond that door unless that door is taken down. So Umar al-Khattab says to him, would that door be open or broken? He said, no, Umar, it needs to be broken. Now, the rest of the Muslims are listening to what Hudayfa is addressing and telling Umar ibn Khattab. Like, they didn't understand what's this long way, big door, needs to be broken, fitna, so on. So Umar ibn Khattab walked away from the gathering. And then the rest of the Muslims turned to the, towards Hudayfa and asked him, oh, Hudayfa, what's this? Long way, big door needs to be broken. What were you talking about? None of us understood anything. As most of you right now don't understand what exactly Hudayfa was saying. So Hudayfa said, that long way and that big door is Umar ibn Khattab. And the fitna would not infiltrate into this ummah until Umar ibn Khattab dies. And yes, the Muslim ummah did not experience fitan and afflictions and corruptions and dispute until Umar ibn Khattab died. Subhanallah. So one of the big signs of the Day of Judgment that the scholars, the scholars believe it really happened is when the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he says the Day of Judgment will not take place until two great armies from my nation will severely fight one another and their call is one. Their call is one and it's important to emphasize on that last phrase because I cannot say Ali was you know the believer and Uawiya was wrong as some sects do no we could say that we both of them are believers Ali and Muawiya both of them are companions and both of them are great companions but maybe Muawiya done a mistake a mistake but for us to criticize Muawiya like how other groups do that's not accepted also my brothers and my sisters one of the signs of the Day of Judgment that already took place is the moon split. Is the moon split in half? When the moon split in half. Now obviously this did not take place during our time, but that took place during the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam was in Mecca, the people of Quraysh challenged the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam that if he's truly a prophet, then split the moon. You say you've got powers from Allah and Allah is the one that runs the universe and Allah is, controls the whole world. Then let your Lord split the, the, the moon. Then let your Lord split the moon. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gathered all the people of Quraysh at one night when the moon was full. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed to Allah, Oh Allah, split the moon. In the presence of all the people of Quraysh, 
they saw the moon split in half. Then Allah Azza wa Jal brought it back together. Allah says in the Quran Kareem, in Surah Al Qamar, verse number one, اقتربت الساعة وانشق القمر. The day of judgment is near, and the moon has split in two. And the moon has split in two. So one of the signs of the day of judgment is the moon split in two, and it really happened during the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he says, we were around the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam. Surrounded by the people of Quraysh and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed to Allah to split the moon. So the moon split in the presence of Ivran. Ivran saw it with their own eyes. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ishadu, Ishadu, witness, witness. Also my brothers and sisters in Islam, one of the signs of the day of judgment is deceivers and liars claiming the prophecy. Deceivers and liars claiming the prophecy. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, the day of judgment would not take place. The day of judgment would not come until deceivers and liars up to 30 in one hadith, 30 of them will claim the messengerhood and prophecy. The day of judgment would not take place until 30 people claim that are prophets until 30 people claim that are messengers and that are prophets in another hadith in nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that the day of judgment will not take place until there are lies and deceivers 27 from amongst them four women will claim the prophecy 27 people will claim the prophecy from amongst the 27 there are four Women who claim the prophets and they say, we are prophets, we are messengers, we receive what Muhammad used to receive. Jibreel comes down on us like he used to come down to Muhammad. And this happened, but not 30, hundreds claimed the prophecy. Hundreds claimed the messengerhood. Amongst those who claimed the prophecy and the messengerhood was Musaylam al kadhab Musaylama. Al Kadhab. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa during his time, he invited Musalama to Islam. Say so Musalama said, I will only become a Muslim if you give me partnership in the prophecy. It's like a business. You take half, 50% of the stake. Oh, 49 for me, 51 for you. So I'm going to have the upper say. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa grabbed the stick from the ground. He said, Wallah, if you ask me for this, I would not even give it to you. <laughs> not the prophecy. See this stick? That's worth nothing. I will not even give it to you. You're a liar. So after the death of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, Musaylama, he said, Muhammad is dead. And the messenger that used to come down to Muhammad is coming down to me. And he claimed prophecy. And he had all the people of Banu Hanifa from the Yamama follow him. He had hundreds of thousands of followers. Why? Not because he's a prophet that asked one of his tribe, one of the members of his tribe, do you believe that Musaylama is a prophet? He said, I oh, know he's a liar, but he's from my tribe. He's from my clan. He's from my family. I'm not gonna take someone from uh, Quraysh. He is from my family. And a lot of you know, stories we could talk about Musaylama and the lies that he used to make. Now the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, one of the signs of the day of judgment, there will be lies and deceivers. Liars and deceivers claim prophecy that will come with words and phrases that you've never heard before you and your family you and your forefathers and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says be aware of them be aware of them do not let them misguide you and take you away from your religion be aware they may be misguided and even during the time of abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu after the death of prophet sallallahu alaihi there was al aswad al ansi and there was Tulayha ibn Khuwaylid, who later on became a Muslim, alhamdulillah. And there was also a female, her name is Sajah, a, a Tamimiyya, from Bani Tamim. She also claimed prophecy. And as I mentioned, not only 30, but hundreds, even the latest Qadian, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadian, who claims to be also a prophet. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, I warn you, 
I am the last of prophets and messengers. I am the last of prophets and messengers. No prophet after me. No prophet after me. That one man claimed prophecy in Egypt, he said, I am no. Didn't the prophet say, no prophet after me? So I'm no. I'm the prophet after Muhammad, I am no. Stupidity. <laughs> Stupidity. So one of the signs of the day of judgment, people claiming the prophecy. People claiming the messagehood. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, they are liars. They are deceivers. Because there is no prophet and messenger after me. That's it. There's no more prophet and messenger after Muhammad. There's no existence of any prophet and messenger after Muhammad. And anyone who believes in a prophet or a messenger after Muhammad, well, this is kufr wal ayyad billah. Disbelief. Also, my brothers and my sisters, one of the minor signs, we're still talking about the minor signs. One of the minor signs of the Day of Judgment and the way, the order I've put it, I'm speaking about those that most of the scholars believe had already appeared. Like how we spoke about the two parties fighting one another, the scholars believe it happened between Ali and Muawiyah. 30 or 27 deceiver, liar claiming the prophecy and that's happened. Okay, also one of the things that the Prophet ﷺ says, the Day of Judgment would not take place until a humongous fire. Until a humongous large fire. They will be lit on in Hijaz. Hijaz where Medina. Medina al munawwara and Mecca. Oh, that state along the borders of the coast of the Red Sea. That's called Hijaz. The Hijaz state. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says, The day of judgment would not take place until a humongous fire appears in Hijaz that the people in Syria will see it appearing on the necks of its camels. The pharaoh of the, of the, or the, or the, pharaoh of the camel is so glowing that if there's a fire you could see the appearance of the fire on it. It's like a mirror, a reflection. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, a humongous, large fire, so big, so significant, so big, that will take place in the Hijaz. People in Syria, South Syria, in Busra, can see its reflection on the necks of its camels. In other words, it will be so big, a fire that's so big, so large, so humongous, that you could see it from far away, from distance away. That Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, say, says, and describes that you could see the reflection of the fire on the necks of the camels. Because the camels are so high, and the necks are so high, and it, it reflects the fire on its, uh, the, the, the reflects like a mirror on its necks. Imam al Nawawi he says, and this fire took place in Medina, because Medina is in Hijaz, Ye 654 Hijrah. 654 Hijrah. We're talking about about 800 years ago. In Nabi, uh, uh, Imam al Nawawi, who is one of the great scholars of Syria, he says, And this fire took place during my time, 654 Hijrah. We heard about it. It was so big. The fire was so humongous and big in Medina that people said they saw its reflection on the necks of, its, uh, of their camels. They saw the reflection of the fire on the necks of their camels. So this is also one of the signs of the Day of Judgment that the scholars believe already took place. Also, my brothers and my sisters, one of the minor signs, I was still talking about the minor signs of the Day of Judgment, is the widespread of security. And again, I told you, the minor signs, not necessarily they mean evil. Some of them are good. Widespread security, or widespread of security, people being secure, it's a good thing, it's not a bad thing. Because when you say signs of the Day of Judgment, the first thing that comes to people's mind, evilness, something bad. Yes, some of it is bad, but some of it is good. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says the Day of Judgment would not take place 
until I travel, I will travel from Iraq to Mecca. From Iraq to Mecca. We're talking about over a thousand kilometers. He has fear of no one. He fears no one. And does not even fear that he will be misguided from his path. Security. No high robbers. No one to come and stop you. And this could also indicate you travel from one part of the world to the other. The airports are so secure. The airports are so secure. No one's going to come with a knife in the middle of the airport. Give me your money. Or steal your luggage. That doesn't happen. So a widespread of security and comfort. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa during his time, there was a, name, a man by the name of Adi. And Adi was a leader amongst his people. And Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam was sitting down with Adi, who just embraced Islam. And then someone comes to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, complains to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam about his poverty. Then another man comes to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, he says, oh messenger of Allah, I can't even travel from one place to another without being robbed. High robbers, always breaking and cutting off the streets. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he looks at Adi. He says, oh Adi, do you know the Hira? So he said, I know about it, but I haven't been there. Hira is one city near Iraq or towards Iraq. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, oh Adi, if you live long, you will see a Muslim female, not a man, a Muslim female. She will travel on her own from Hira to Kaaba, and she fears no one except Allah. She's not scared. You know, these days to walk down the street from your house to the shop, to the corner shop, you get scared. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Muslim woman by herself, she'll come all the way from Iraq to Mecca, thousands of kilometers, Traveling in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the bush, she fears no one but Allah. And no one goes near her. Security. Widespread of security. Some scholars say this hasn't happened yet. It will happen during the time of Mahdi and Isa. And some say it did happen. Some people say, look, these days you could travel from one part of the world to the other. You could send your 10-year-old son and he'll arrive safely to his parents from one place to the other. Because the airport security and so on and so on. Now, also one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is excessive, excessive, exa uh, exaggeration of decorating the mosques. Excessive and over exaggeration, exaggeration in decorating the mosques. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is that people will start having pride with one another on how good the mosque looks. Look, ah, oh, you've got a, you know, a chandelier of 100,000, we bought it for half a million. Ah, oh, look at the pulpit, it's made, you know, out of a marble, oh, we got it from Turkey, you got yours from China. Ah, oh, look at the carpet, yeah, it cost you how much, 200 grand? It cost, our mosque in Lakemba cost us half a million, not this one. All right. Ah, this, that, other exaggeration. People exaggerate and ever do in decorating the mosques. And this is normal, like you look around this mosque, it's a simple mosque. But you go to other mosques, you get lost. With the decorations and the, you know, the, 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 the other exaggeration and excessive expenditure on, on, on decorating the mosque. And this is not from, it's not haram by the way, but it's not from the sunnah. So it's not haram to have a very nice looking good mosque. But the sunnah is that you keep it simple. And honestly, you as a Muslim, you feel more khushu' diversion when you enter a mosque that's simple. Not that's dirty, we're not talking about dirty stinking mosque. No, we're talking about, not the reason, dirty stinking mosque, but yani, I mean that, or that means something dirty, I mean something simple. Something simple, and the mosque of the Prophet ﷺ was, had a simple mosque. The walls of the mosque were made out of clay, and the roof was made out of the, uh, the, the, the branches of a palm tree. But the sunnah is that you have a simple mosque. And one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, that people ever exaggerate in decorations of the mosque, ever exaggerate. You know, spend so much money, 
on decorating the mosque when the reality is that the mosque needs to be built with its people, not with the decoration. Lastly for tonight, one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is the loss of trust. Loss of trust. Amana. What does it mean, loss of trust? It means a lot. It means that you can't find a trustworthy person to trust him with something to keep at his place or with him. You give someone, can you look after these valuables? You give it to him after one month, he denies that he took anything from you. That's one. But also, there's another meaning to it. While Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is addressing the Sahaba, a Bedouin walks into the mosque. And from far away he says to Muhammad, Oh Muhammad, when is the day of judgment? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept quiet and continued with his talk. Some of the Sahaba thought that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got offended from that question. Others thought Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam disliked that question. But then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he finished, he said, where is the questioner? Where is the one that just questioned me? When is the day of judgment? He got up and said, Here I am, O Messenger of Allah. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, When the trust, when the trust is lost, when the trust is lost, wait for the day of judgment. So he said, O Messenger of Allah, how is it that the trust can be lost? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, If the irresponsible person is given responsibility, then wait for the day of judgment. The incompetent person, irresponsible person, unqualified person is given a responsibility, then wait for the day of judgment. When you find that the one that leads the country is the most scummiest person, the most unqualified, the most uneducated, the most ruthless person to lead people, and the Messiah says, wait for the day of judgment. When you find Muslim organizations these days that the head and the president of this organization that's probably worth millions is the biggest thief, crook, criminal, uneducated, unqualified person. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, then wait for the day of judgment. Wait for the day of judgment. These days, you find that the Muslim organizations are led by who? People who are ex-criminals. And then you say, what's his qualification? Doesn't even know how to read or even put two sentences together. You know, this phenomena didn't exist during the time of the Arabs, even the non-Muslims. At that time, even they had kufr, but they always choose the best of people to represent them. They're most eloquent in speech, they're most qualified in knowledge, they're most respected. But if you look at the situation of this ummah, look at the situation of this ummah, look at the, some of the presidents and some of the prime ministers of the countries, you find them they're the biggest crooks. They are crooks, criminals. They have a black and dirty record. And now they want to come and lead the people. They want to lead the people. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when you find the irresponsible person, irresponsible, someone incompetent and unqualified is the one that's given responsibilities, they wait for the day of judgment. <coughs> wait for the day of judgment. And this is one of the things that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. And that's why losing the amana. The loss of amana is not only a trust that you are given, you lose it, but in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as he says in the hadith, taking a responsibility is a trust in front of Allah and regret in the hereafter. Trust, trust in front of Allah and regret in the hereafter. Allah is entrusting you with something and you're going to regret over it in the hereafter. So that's why, Ikhwani, one of the signs of the Day of Judgment that I believe it's widespread, Start with where we are from now. Where we are from where we are in this country, for example. Look at some of the Muslim organizations who they led by. Just Muslim organizations. Look at even the country. Look at our politicians. We just had elections on the weekend. And it, wallahi, sometimes you look at some of those MPs, you, you are not all, but some of them, wallahi, it's like you laugh. This guy, who is he representing? This is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, is when irresponsible person takes on a responsibility. Incompetent person takes on a huge responsibility. And that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, where is the questioner? He said, here I am, our messenger of Allah. 
So the Prophet والسلام, he says, when you find the amana is lost, then wait for the day of judgment. He said, how is that? And Nabi Sallallahu said, when the irresponsible person is given responsibility. This is so far, we've only mentioned 13, but there's about 70. And inshallah, I'm going to mention most of them as we come throughout the following, week, uh, following Mondays with Allah Azza wa Jal. I ask Allah to make us from amongst those who listen and he act upon with the listen he. Subhanak Allah, bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.